Hello, everybody. Uh, welcome to another lesson on HMC Level 4, Unit 4, Management and Operations. My name is Isbana Naz, and I will be taking you forward with uh, the lesson. So today we will be continuing our lesson on uh, learning outcome one, which is differentiating between the role of a leader and the function of a manager. So well, what we are going to discuss today is based on what we understand the difference between leadership and management, the definitions and differences of both a leader and a manager, management functions such as planning, organizing, controlling, and directing, some of the uh, renowned theories of leadership traits, style, and contingency, what we understand by transformational and transactional leader, action-centered leadership, hard management skills, and soft leadership skills. So, Moving on, we're going to start with uh, what we understand by uh, the difference between leadership and management. So while, I mean, we, we have discussed uh, before uh, in our learning outcome one in the first part that leaders and managers, they can be uh, the same people. Uh, they can be, uh, they, they, they may have the same traits uh, they, they, it's, it's all about managers uh, are usually their task is to assign tasks, um, assign a task to their employees, but uh, leaders uh, can be managers as well. Leaders will also um, uh, look, look, for, uh, look forward to um, uh, leading the uh, employees uh, with, uh, correctly with the task. So uh, while there are many traits that make up strong leaders, some of the key characteristics that makes up a leader is uh, honesty and integrity. So a leader has to be honest. Uh, it is crucial to get your people to believe in you and buy into the journey you are taking them into. So it's very important that you're honest with them, that you're transfer transparent with them, okay? And you are you alongside your employees are moving forward to the same goal. Uh, vision, know where you, where you stand, where you want to go and enroll your team in charting a path for the future. Uh, you have, uh, the leaders need to be inspir ins inspiring. Leaders need to inspire the team to be, uh, uh, to, to, to move forward towards the same goal, towards the same uh, vision. Uh, leaders need, should have the ability to challenge. They should not be afraid to challenge the status quo, a status quo uh, do things differently, okay? It's, uh, they should not just focus on the task, but their aim should be to focus on the employees as well. Uh, leaders need to have uh, proper communication skills. Keep, you, they need to keep their team informed. Okay, they, they, it needs to ha they need to have like a two-way communication. It cannot be a one-way communication. And share roadblocks, share uh, knowledge, and shared skills with uh, the employees. So some of the common traits shared by strong managers as well. So we looked into what are some of the traits of leaders. And now we're going to look into what are some of the common uh, traits of a strong manager. So managers should be able to execute a vision, take a strategic vision and break it down into a roadmap to be followed by the team. Ability to direct day-to-day -day work efforts, review resources uh, and anticipate needs along the way. So their task is not just to assign the, the task and set deliverables uh, for, uh, for, for the employees, but they have to actually monitor the entire process. So they have to have a proper process management, establish work rules, processes, standards, and operating procedures. People, they need to be people focused, look after the people, their needs, listen to them and involve and involve them. So both managers and leaders, okay, they need to perform managerial functions, all right? So in order to do that, managers need to have uh, proper planning, planning activities that will achieve the organizational goals and objectives. Managers need to be organized. The, they need to organize the resources that they have, the activities to achieve the organizational objectives. 
uh, staffing the organized, uh, they need to properly staff the organization with qualified people, have proper talent management, have proper human resource management in place. They need to direct employees' activities towards achieving the goals and objectives. And also at the end, they need to have proper controlling of the organization's activities to keep it on track. So as you can see here that managers just do not have the luxury to just give away the task and you know, not do anything afterwards. They have to go through all of this process of planning, organizing, staffing, directing, and controlling. So yes, uh, so previously we have uh, discussed about some of the uh, renowned managerial theories that has been established over the years and many organizations have uh, used these managerial theories and they have actually uh, found it successful using them in, in their organization. But like I said before, not one shoe fees fits all so the managerial theories needed to be adapted by different organizations according to their needs, according to their goals and objectives. Similarly, leadership leaders should have certain traits characteristic based on the organization they're working on, based on the tasks that they are delegating. So leadership theories are schools of thought brought forward to explain how and why certain individuals become leaders. What kind of characters, what kind of traits does these leaders have, okay? And like I said, it differs from organization to organization or person to person. The theories emphasize the traits and behaviors that individuals can adapt to, to boost their own leadership abilities. So again, let's look at what leadership is. A leader is crucial to the success of every team. Take an orchestra, for example, okay? That consists you know how the orchestra works, right? So the orchestra, they always guide the musicians. They always guide the people who are playing different instruments on how they're going to play it, how they're going to move on to the next tune, okay? So take an orchestra, for example, one that consists of all the best musicians in the world, but lacks a conductor. Even though every member of the orchestra can play perfectly by themselves, they will only produce an incompatible melody in the absence of a conductor. So if the conductor wasn't showing them how to exactly play the music, okay, then they would just be, you know, everyone will be doing their own thing. And maybe then they will not be able to produce the best music out of, uh, the, out of that team. So the conductor will help them. The conductor within an orchestra actually helps the other musicians to play uh, their instrument in a certain way so that the tune comes out similarly and um, in, in a collaborative manner. So the same concept applies to communities, companies, and countries. Without a leader, nothing will run smoothly. So what makes leader who they are today? Think about it. Why are some people elected as managers and presidents while the rest remain followers? Leadership theories were developed to find answers to these questions. So there are many different theories of leadership, and they, here, are, here are some of uh, the very few to be named. So we will look into all of these different leadership theories one by one. So uh, there, there are great, great man theory, there are trait theories, behavioral theories, contingency theories, charismatic leadership theory, transactional leadership, and transformational leadership theory. So first we will look into what we understand by great man theory. So great man theory was established by Mr. Thomas Carlyle in the 1840s, who suggested that great leaders are born, not made. So the debate, the, the long awaited debate about if great leaders are born or, or made, this is still such an argumentative issue still now in this uh, day and age, okay? So, um, I mean, Leaders, uh, you know, it de depends from people's opinion to um, from one one opinion to the other. So some people believe that yes, leaders are born, and some people believe that leaders are made. So, uh, Mr. Thomas Car Carlyle, what he said that um, great man, great leaders have some intrinsic quality, have some qualities within them, okay, which they are born with. 
And some of these qualities are intelligence, confidence, charisma, and sociability. Okay, so this is what Thomas Carlyle believed in, that these are what, uh, you know, individuals uh, with great leadership traits are born with. So uh, further to what he said with uh, uh, along uh, great man theory, that um, leaders are born, not made. This approach emphasized that a person is born with or without the necessary Okay, so he said that maybe he can be born or he may not be born with the necessary traits of leadership. Early explanations of leadership studied the traits of great leaders. So great man theories are, are said to be, uh, some of the great examples are Mahatma Gandhi, Abraham Lincoln, Napoleon, believe that people were born with these traits and only that great people can possess the traits that we have discussed earlier, which is intelligence, confidence, sociability, charisma. So these assumptions that leaders are born and not made and possess certain traits which were inherited, great leaders can arise when there is a great need. The theory, much of the work on this history was done within the 19th century and is often linked to the work of the historian Thomas Carlyle, like I said. So the history of the world is but the biography of great men. So he, he suggested that men with the qualities, with that inherited qualities, so they are born and they have that qualities for which it makes them great leaders. Earlier leadership was considered as a quality associated mostly with the male, okay? And therefore the theory was named as the great man theory. But later with the emergence of many great woman leaders as well, the theory was also recognized later on. It has been changed to great person theory. The great man theory of leadership states that some people are born with the necessary attributes that set them apart from others, and that these traits are responsible for their assuming positions of power and authority. There has been some criticism of this theory as well, that many of the traits cited as being important to be an effective leader are typically masculine traits, in contemporary research, in modern research, there is a significant shift in such mentality. So think about it. Does people still believe in this great man theory? It's not that it's still not in existence. Some people still believe in it, that the great man theory still exists. Leaders are actually born and cannot be made. And, uh, you know, with that mentality, some people uh, uh, still believe in that, in this concept. So concluding with the great man theory of leadership, with the emerging interest in understanding what leadership is, researchers focus on the leader, okay? Think about it, who is the leader? What are the distinguishing characteristics that make up great or effective leaders? This gave rise to the early research efforts to the trait approach to leadership. So moving on from Thomas Carlyle's great man theory, then came the trait approach to leadership, okay? So what did the trait theory said? Great man theory said that leaders are born. Leaders have intrinsic qualities or characteristics. Trait man theory says that in the early 1900s and the early 1840s was Thomas Carlyle's great man theory. Trait theory came in the early 1900s. So it said that it summarized the traits held by great leaders throughout the history. Okay, so throughout history, whichever leaders came into play, the trait theory talked about those characteristics that made up a, a, a leader. So the proposal was organizations will be better if leaders hold these following traits. So the, so the traits were intelligence, confidence, determination, integrity, sociability, and also to have the big five personality factors. So this Trait theory has introduced one important aspect of uh, uh, the leadership trait theory, theory, which is the big five personality factors. So the trait theory only considers leaders as the driving force of the leadership process. So the leaders possessing certain traits is critical to having effective leadership. Strength, this approach is intuitive and understandable. It also has over a century of supporting research. One of the weaknesses of the trait theory is that it can be, the list can be endless. It does not have to be concise to the list that is provided here. 
This approach fails to take situations and followers into account, and it's not useful for training purposes. Also, the characteristic attributes attributed to leaders throughout time has been masculine, leading to a biased list of uh, traits that make up a leader. So like I said that the big five uh, personality factors or personality traits has been added to the trait theory. So addition to the list of traits that uh, a leader should have, um, the trait theory also says that an individual need to have this five big five personalities. So what are these five big, per big five personalities? They are having conscientiousness, okay? They need to, leaders need to have proper mindset, all right, to, to organize, to, to be persistent, to have proper planning. They need to be responsible, punctual. Leaders need to have an agreeable nature. They need to know that they will be working in teams and they need to collaborate. They need to collegiate, collegiate. Uh, they need to be generous. They need to be honest, have integrity, have kindness, and be trustworthy so that their subordinates can actually trust them, so that their subordinates can have that communication with these leaders. They need to have emotional stability. They must be, they must be confident. They must be able to cope with stress. They, may, they have to be empathetic. They need to have self-esteem, self-consciousness. These leaders need to have need to be open to experience they cannot stay rigid they cannot just stay concise to what they know or what they believe in okay then they need to be curious curious they need to be creative they need to be globally aware have a growth mindset they need to be innovative they need to have a great imagination so alongside uh, the last big five personality trait consists of extroversion they need to be cheerful. They need to be, you know, uh, you know, um, like extrovert. They need to be communicative. They need to be optimistic. Okay, that's what would make them a good leader. Okay, so the trait theory said that alongside the other characteristics, the most important thing that leaders should have is these five big personalities. So, if the so the five big personality uh, factor was uh, was time scaled on a low score and a high score. So leaders, okay, who had a, a low score, okay, of uh, of all these different based on all these five different uh, personality, uh, if they had a low score, it meant that they were very practical. For example, openness that they must have imagination, feelings, action, or ideas. If they have that trait. If they are more curious, if they have wide range of interests or independent, it means that they have a high score of personality. That then that it makes them a very um, efficient leader. But if they have a low score, it shows that they are just practical. They're very conventional and they prefer routine. Okay. So based on the five uh, different traits, uh, which is uh, termed as ocean, uh, openness conscientiousness, extroversion, agreeableness, and neuroticism. Well, it is different in every uh, ter terminology, but over here they've used ocean. So basically, and a leader who has a high score, it means that they have that personality within them and they are effective leaders. But if they have low score, they are more like a leader, but a leader who likes to, you know, go by the book. They do, they do not believe in imagination. They do not believe in innovation. Okay, so, so here's, uh, you know, an, a, an exercise for you to think about that to what extent do you agree or disagree that great man theory or trade theory is still in use in today's modern organization? So can you think about organization or can you think about some leaders, okay, some the, the very big leaders of the world nowadays, do you think that they pursue or they inherit a great man theory or do, you, do they inherit a trait theory? Moving on, we will look into what we understand by behavioral theory. So behavioral theory views leadership as a set of behaviors. So leaders need to have certain leadership uh, behaviors that would make them effective leaders. So this, uh, they need to have some uh, proper managerial style as well. 
So as a reaction to the trait theories, the behavioral theory looks not as the traits or abilities of leaders, but their behavior. Okay, it's not what you know, traits leaders have. It's not that, you know, if they have confidence, if they're open, if they're empathetic, or if they have the conscientiousness, or, if, you know, if they uh, have the openness to communication, but actually how leaders act um, uh, effectively. So there were two behavior categories that were introduced in behavioral theory. One is based on task behavior, which facilitates goals and accomplishments of leaders and followers, how effectively they are able to complete and do the task. And the next one is relationship behavior, which the name says it all, that where the leader will help followers feel more comfortable around the leader and about the organization. So behavioral leadership theory can you think about what are some of the implications of behavioral theory in today's organization? Can you think about organizational examples or, or uh, individuals, uh, examples of individuals uh, on your own? So think about it, that great man theory, trade theory, or behavioral theory, which one is still in existence the most in most of the organizations nowadays, okay? So the next one is transformational leader. So what do we understand by transformational leadership? Transformational leadership is where the leaders model their way. Okay, they show the path. They, it's just like the example that we gave of an orchestra. Okay, the orchestra shows they 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 um you know they they show their uh, team members how to go about with the music, how to play the tune. Okay, so a transformation leader should do the same thing. They should show the path to their uh, subordinates to, with their team that how to actually go about with the work that they have to do. They encourage the heart means that they will encourage people to actually work in the same goals and objectives that the, transform that the leader is pursuing. They need to have an inspired, inspiring and a shared vision with their team members, with their subordinates. Transformation leaders need to have the inability and let others act alongside, uh, the, the, alongside the leaders. So it's a collaborative approach. Transformation leaders should not walk alone. They, uh, they should walk together as a team, help the team and collaborate together and if there are, you know, do things out of the box, challenge the processes so that they can do much better and aim higher uh, in terms of their goals and objectives. So uh, transformation leadership, uh, they look into uh, individual and organizational characteristics. They think about how to establish a good organizational character, how to build their individual traits and they, they, they act as uh, role models for others. They share their life experiences. They, share, uh, they, they act as role models for how others perceive them. The leadership behaviors in transformation leaders uh, should be inspiring. They need to be motivating. They, they are role models that people need to idolize them. They, you know, they need to have idealistic behaviors. Um, the followers, should, uh, they, they should have like increased leadership identification. The followers should feel motivated to follow them and have the um, uh, persuasion to work together and achieve the same goal. And ultimately, uh, the, the leaders and alongside the team members and the subordinates will have increased organizational commitment, increased commitment as leader and vision and increased altruism. So we looked into how transformation leadership is all about working together, is, uh, is uh, play, uh, is, uh, has the ability to uh, come together and uh, work together. Transactional leadership is more about, um, you know, assigning the task to the team members or to the subordinates. They're more focused about reward performance. They have some short term vision, okay, that these things need to be done ASAP, and once these things are done, 
the team members or the subordinates will be rewarded according to their performance. They're very practical, okay? It's uh, transactional leadership falls under some sort of like a hierarchical uh, business environment, organizational structure. They are less flexible and they have external motivation, okay? So online transformational leadership, where they are all about collaborative approach, there is like a flat, flat organizational structure. Everyone can communicate with each other. Transactional leadership is the, just the opposite. But don't get me wrong, but transactional leadership actually works in very well in some institutions, in some organizations. Like I said, it depends from one organization to the other, how they're going to adapt to different uh, theories of leadership. So let's look at this difference between transactional and transformational leadership. So transactional leadership is all about the rank that the leaders possess, which position they are in. Transformational leadership is all about the characteristic, the competences they have. Uh, trans uh, transactional leadership is all about compliance, is all about uh, getting things done properly and transformation leader is all about staying committed, okay? How they can actually, um, uh, you know, uh, pursue and um, uh, uh, like uh, commit and um, encourage people to work together. Transactional leadership has like a short-term vision. They, they probably have short-term goals for which that things need to be done ASAP and they get it done and dusted as soon as possible. Transformation leader, they think more long-term, okay? That even if there are some tasks that need to be done immediately, they still have a long-term vision. Transactional leaders, leaders uh, pay attention to rewards, pay promotion, but transformational leaders they they focus on um uh, they, they focus on rewards as 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 uh, part of pride self-esteem etc supervision is very important uh, in transactional leadership but in transformational leadership they they less focus on supervision they more they're more focused on having a collaborative approach so transactional leaders they they evaluate others work and transformational leaders, they think about how they can develop others' work. So transactional is more like a follower behavior attitude, but transformational has like a follower attitude with values. Uh, leaders, uh, transactional leaders, they follow as the trait of a leader, leader, but transformational leaders, they follow by heart. Okay, so we can see like a distinct, uh, there's, a, there's a, a big distinction between transactional and transformational leadership. Uh, lastly, uh, there is also something known as action-centered leadership. So action-centered leadership is all about getting the task done. They accomplish the task, they build a team, and in that way, they will empower the individual. So all the new different leadership theories that we have discussed today, think about that how each of these leadership theories actually uh, work in different organizations in today's com contemporary organization. So your task, again, like I said, what kind of leaders do you think organization opt for nowadays? And try to provide some organizational examples. Think about some organizational examples that actually adhere to some of these leadership theories. Um, hope you will find, you will be able to find uh, and understand the different concepts of leadership theories even more. And, uh, you know, with the help of when you, when you provide or when you look into organizational examples. Thank you. Uh, and I will see you again next time. Take care.